I'm actually really pleased with how the village turned out in the last episode, and I'm glad to see in the comments on that last episode that a lot of you seem to enjoy the result here as well. But before we get into what we're doing today, there are a couple of orders of business with the village that we have to talk about. First and foremost is that there was a comment that pointed out that from above, it sort of looks like a mustache that's main straight, and now I can't unsee that, so thank you very much for that one. Secondly, there was a request to continue the tree lines around the farm fields themselves so that it is a little bit more established that these empty spaces are in fact farms themselves which i think was a pretty solid shout it took a little bit to do because it's just tedious to place all these trees but i do think the result is definitely worth it and while i was doing that i decided to make the tree line for the forest a little bit more dense in a few places as well and i've added a bit of color with some of the flower bushes as well a lot of this stuff still hasn't grown in, so we're still going to be waiting a while for that to happen. But I do think when all of this fills in, when all of this grows, it's going to look amazing. And then finally, we come to the name, which is going to be Victoria Glen, which is the name that the game suggested originally. Obviously, I took Glen out of it, but the top comment that suggested a name basically suggested sticking with Victoria Glen because it is a nice little name. And this is basically a Glen that the village resides in so city skylines 2 absolutely knocked it out of the park with the first suggestion for the district so this is now victoria Glen. the only thing i'm thinking is that barlow street might get renamed to victoria street because honestly why not now in other news i've been noticing this happening a lot these sort of rolling traffic jams that seem to be caused by nothing at all if i'm completely honest I, well i say nothing at all i've noticed that quite frequently road maintenance vehicles do seem to be involved in these little rolling traffic jams and i call them rolling traffic jams because you can sort of see what's going on it's just a lot of traffic but it is moving for the most part i mean yes they're stopped here because a train just went past but it moves it gets going it doesn't really seem to be a long-term issue and I'm noticing that same problem happening in a couple of places in the highways. I've noticed it happening a couple of places in the city and it happens over here as well for, oh wait, no, that's not a, that's just a traffic accident. Never mind. Long story short, this keeps happening along Primrose Highway and it happens all the way to Victoria Glen as well. And at one point it was happening out here. And so that got me thinking about traffic and having a look at the traffic flow overlay it's terrifying if we zoom out it's not really a good picture so i did some research i went to the subreddit i went to the forums i went to the discord and i started reading into what exactly is going on here because we have a traffic flow at the moment of less than 60 percent and that makes sense for places like this industrial zone but it doesn't necessarily make sense for this highway interchange and even though the new interchange can get a bit rough sometimes it probably shouldn't be this red either and so from what i've seen from what i've read and from what's been mentioned in some developer insight videos for city skylines 2 before it came out this overlay doesn't function the same way as it did in city skylines 1. this isn't saying that hey traffic is bad right now this is sort of analyzing potential bottlenecks for traffic across the entire city so basically there's a lot of potential for bottlenecks in linden which I don't love, I'm going to be honest, I don't love that that's a thing, but honestly, at the very least, this is a very cool looking view, so I'm sort of okay with it for now. Anyway, I want to move away from all of that and I want to come into this space right here near the post sorting facility because what I want to do is go ahead and essentially remove every single tree in this massive amount of space because we're going to be building something today that I've been wanting to build for a little while. I'm going to need a stronger brush to do this, and I'm going to be here forever. Basically, every single tree needs to go. We're going to have to replant this entire forest at some point, although we might be building a suburb in here. Because for now, I want to flatten this land, and I want to build the airport in here, which honestly is going to go roughly right about there and my positioning of this thing is completely deliberate i want it to be facing sort of through the valley right about there and it is sort of facing the mountain but it's not super bad it's it's kind of okay a plane can take off and sort of bank to the right a little bit i'm i'm sure it's fine now i will say when it comes to the roads around this thing i'm gonna be relatively simple with it because i did 
actually do a little bit of research into airport layouts in Northern Ireland, where I'm from, and I realized that the roads that lead into the two airports that I'm familiar with, which is Belfast International Airport and Belfast City Airport, they're really simple. One of them is basically a little country road that goes up to the airport. That's for Belfast International. And one of them is sort of like a highway like this that just has essentially that. It just cuts straight across and goes into a big parking area. And that's about it. There's nothing fancy going on, which honestly for this airport kind of makes sense. This is a, it's a relatively small airport. It's not an international one. It's not huge. So this kind of makes sense for for what I'm looking for. So we're going to stick relatively simple with it. I'm probably going to change this highway into something similar to this one. Just the little sort of four lane single road thing. We'll bring that the entire way around here. We'll turn it back into the two lanes down about here. And honestly, probably a roundabout. That's that's probably what we're going to go for here. So very quickly, let's go in and basically just tear out an entire huge stretch of highway up to about there. We're going to do exactly the same thing with this guy up to about there. And thankfully, I can see where the road needs to go and where it used to be. So we can pretty much follow that exact same path. And then eventually we'll put a roundabout in here and connect it out to the airport once I figure out what exactly the layout's going to be in and around the airport. Now, I will say if this video has a bunch more cuts in it than usual and it seems like I'm uh, not talking fast, just if there's just more cuts, basically, it's because every minute or two, I'm basically coughing up a lung. I think I'm getting sick. And so instead of like, this is the only way there's going to be a video, right? It's going to be a little more choppy than usual because I'm cutting out a lot of me just, you know, coughing up a lung into the microphone and it's not a, doesn't make for great television. So that's, that's what's going on just in case you happen to notice that there's a few more cuts than usual. Anyway, when it comes to the airport itself, I think what I'm going to do is essentially a little one way system. I think that probably makes a bit of sense. And I'm going to just start with two lanes sort of going around this entire thing. I don't necessarily think we need to go the entire length of the airport, although in saying that, I sort of like the idea of a business lounge. I think that would be nice for this spot. And I also like the idea of a cargo terminal. It fills up that area really nicely. And then we can also do airport services. This will pay rent, which offsets some of the airport maintenance costs. It increases water and electricity. That's fine. So we're going for a fully upgraded airport. We have this cargo connection to it as well, which honestly, I wish I could build a little road out here. I think it would look so good. This is also going to be a nightmare because now I need to connect this train to my existing line or I suppose I could just run it sort of down here around the landfill and out to the region without connecting to the rest of my network. But that would probably be a little bit silly. Let's be completely honest. That would definitely be a little bit silly, but we'll figure that out. Now, in saying that, in terms of other things to put in this space, I'm very tempted to find a way to squeeze a solar power plant out here just because I kind of want there to be other things in this area. My only problem with that is I also want to put some houses out around this guy. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. We're probably just going to try and squeeze a little bit of a suburb around this with a nice sort of border around the airport. So there's sort of a natural sound barrier, mostly because I do want people living out here and we do have a lot of demand for more housing. So it would kind of make sense. So if I do put a solar power plant out here, that is going to take up a lot of the space. And so I don't. 100% know if that's a good idea, but I am very, very tempted to try it anyway. And so I think for the time being, I'm going to avoid doing the solar power plant. And instead, we're just going to focus on getting away into this place. Now, what I think we'll do is have three lanes coming in. We're going to have one that cuts across here, and this is probably where the bulk of parking is going to go. We're going to have two that comes in here. This is where we can have people dropped off by buses and taxis and all that good stuff. But we also have this split to give us access to the cargo place. So we've got a lot of Honestly, lane management around here is pretty solid. We've got them all sort of following the rules. So three splits into two and one. The two splits into one and one, which merges into two down here. Eventually, it merged back into three somewhere down here. I'm just excited about the lane math that we've got going on. I think it's going to look pretty cool. But before we get to all of that, I do want to get some parking lots in here. So let's have a look at what we can do. We do have some very large options, but I think the medium ones are probably what I'm going to go for simply because they connect together so perfectly. They just bump right up against each other. 
and look absolutely fantastic. There's no fences around them, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. They also have these massive floodlights that look very airport-ish, and we do have a gap in the middle, maybe do an alleyway down through there or something like that. In fact, I think that's maybe exactly what I'll do just to sort of fill in the space. Doesn't seem like a terrible idea. I don't know if it's the best idea, but I think it's what I'm going to go for. Also, my, oh, I think my, I thought my autosave was going to crash the game. I got really concerned. We'll do something like this, and that does ever so slightly mess with the, that is ever, that is going to mess a little bit with my, um, with my layout here, which I'm not thrilled about. I'm not 100% sure what way I want to do the math on this, but I think we'll figure it out. If we bring this guy down a little bit, we can do, let's see, I think we want this to be our overlap. No, we want that to be our overlap, I think. So we'll just bring this across for now. And what I can do is put more of these parking lots just along here and along here as well. This might seem like a lot of parking. It is a lot of parking, but it is an airport to be fair. So it probably should have a decent amount of parking. So that's kind of what we're going for. And I guess what we can do, arguably, is something like this. And then we'll have maybe just two lanes coming in here. So if we get rid of you, we have two lanes that merge to become three, which does mean that this lane is going to have to sort of merge out somewhere, but that's fine. We have two lanes that maybe merge or split here to become one again. So we have sort of that dedicated lane the entire way around. And I'm leaving this gap as well, sort of intentionally, because my thinking was at some point I'm going to bring suburbs or suburbs, subways out here. But we could also do sort of a dedicated tram track sort of in the middle here. And I think that would look kind of cool. So that's sort of going to be my goal with this whole thing. Can I also do a very sharp turn for the trams? Is that is that something I can get away with? It absolutely is. Okay. So that's basically how the trams are going to get in here. Going to be a relatively sharp turn, but that's... Eh, that does look a little bit silly. And it's also going to be a nightmare for traffic trying to get across here. Maybe we do a bit of a wider curve on this just to go for something that's going to look a little bit more... I don't know, comfortable, I guess, is the word I'm going to go for. We'll go for comfortable. So that's 48. Let's do, let's just do the full 48 by 48. So the trams are sort of coming in at a, uh, at a reasonable sort of point. We'll do the same thing on this side. So we'll go for 48 and we'll go to, let me turn off guidelines. Uh, we'll go to 48 there as well. We can extend these guys down and we can extend it down on this side as well. And I probably could get away with a one-way system for trams here, but I'm sort of okay with this. Although somewhat annoyingly, I've just realized that you can't just go across tram tracks with a path. So I might just want to merge this into this road right here and not bother with this space in the middle. And I think, I mean, arguably this road shouldn't have that much traffic on it anyway. I don't love the idea of doing this, but I think we're going to. I think I'm going to have to do that. I think I'm going to have to merge it so that the trams are just coming in. I, I really don't want to. I really like the idea of this dedicated space, but if I can't do paths across it, then I think it's going to be a little bit silly. So we're just going to get rid of the tram tracks for now. And then what I'm going to do is just put a bunch of paths in here to sort of nicely uh, border this entire space, give people a bunch of options in terms of how they can get around, how they can cross the roads and all that good stuff. Probably not going to go too crazy with traffic lights. I don't think we're necessarily going to need them, but I do think letting people walk across here is going to be kind of important. So that's sort of why I want to do this. And that lets people get around. It also gives me space to do some landscaping with some bushes and some trees and all that good stuff. And maybe I just, I don't know, maybe we just do a train station out here. We're already going to have trains coming out to this space. So maybe... Maybe a train station. Maybe we try and connect it. I mean, we have... Oh, we don't have any trains coming out here. I might have to buy these tiles and sort of bring the trains off this way and sort of through. That would be kind of cool, honestly. Bring the train line sort of through this little space in the neighborhood. We might have to do some stuff with Blackwood. I mean, we do have good space for it, too. This area right in here would probably be perfect for a train. It is kind of perfect for a train. It's really annoying. <laughs> It's really, really annoying that it does sort of fit perfectly right there. Oh, man. Do I want to do this? 
I sort of do. I, I do like the idea of a train station. It, it, it makes sense, you know? And then we can do a subway connection later on. So I think maybe we do avoid the trams. We'll do trains. We'll do subways. We'll do buses. So yeah, we're going to build train station right there. And somehow I need to connect this all together. I do not know how I'm going to do it. We'll also do a taxi stop. We'll do the station services. We'll do the extra platforms. I've got no idea. No idea how I'm going to connect this all together. And I'm also pretty sure I'm probably going to want to do a bridge here to go over the tracks. Otherwise, traffic coming in here is going to have a really tough time. So what we'll do is I think I can go to here. I want to say I can go to here. And I want to say I can maybe get away. This is going to be relatively steep, but I'm hoping I can get away with 6.25 meters. That is that is not going to work, is it? Because it's going to be the cut and fill one. It's going to have that solid. Oh, boy. Let's just test it anyway. Is it going to let me punch straight through? It is not. OK, so what we'll do instead is we'll bring these tracks out. We'll go for 168 meters on every single one of them so I can see exactly what I'm dealing with on both sides. This side's going to be interesting because it's going to have two bridges because I'm not going to be merging just yet. So we'll do 248 on this side again, just so we can see exactly what we're working with. And somehow I need to get over this or somehow I bring this. Maybe I just bring this road sort of down and around sooner than later. That might not be the worst idea in the world, to be completely honest with you. So this guy maybe comes down. We'll put you down to ground level like so. Maybe it just goes in like that. So it sort of merges. And then we have these two lanes. Ooh, no, I don't. I don't know if I like that lane math. Let's do a little bit of asymmetry instead. We'll bring you down to, say, here, something kind of like this. So that means that our two lanes become three lanes, which means that the two lanes are going straight out this way. This is going to be a little bit chaotic, I think, but I'm pretty sure I can get away with it. So 7.5 meters there. Is that enough to get over? It isn't really. Oh, man. How high do I need to go with this? The answer for those curious was 8.75 meters to get over the train tracks, which is considerable, but the game is going to let me do it. So I think just this once, I mean, it's a it's a 15 percent gradient. It is pretty steep, but I think we're just going to have to do it, to be completely honest with you. So we'll do this. We're going to flip you around. And then I need to measure exactly what distance this was. So from there to there is 56 meters so we want to go from here to there 56 meters so 15.6 percent on the uh, on the gradient that is that is a bit rough but that's okay we'll do exactly the same thing here so 56 this one's going out this one's going in and i might change these guys into highways just because they they probably should be so we'll swap those out and we'll do exactly the same thing down here. Oh, wait, no, I need to make sure it lines up, which it's, ooh, I could shuffle it down a little bit and that might look better. It gives us a bit of a straighter run into the space. So let's just very quickly do that. And let's see, can this one line up? Is it gonna let me do that? I don't think it is. So we'll take you out of there. In fact, we'll do the same thing at this end, take you out. And then I wanna see, can I swap this back into a, I can just swap it like that. I can just completely shuffle that over and get a really nice straight run into the uh, into the airport, which I absolutely want to do. So that is a nice straight run at the minute. That's going to be off to the side. That's exactly what I want right there. So these lanes just run straight into the existing ones. These two lanes sort of run into these lanes out here. Can I shuffle you anymore? I don't think I can. So that's kind of perfect. Yes, it's a bit weird around here. I don't necessarily love this, but it's not really the end of the world. I could I could probably make this a little bit smaller, and I think I'm going to. So we're going to just bring you into here, take this bit out, and then we'll swap this guy out for three lanes as well. So we have three lanes. Well, we have one lane from a bunch of directions going into three, which splits off into one and two. That seems fine. That should be OK. That's that's oh, it's so it's a it's a bit busier than I thought it was going to be. I really wasn't planning on doing a train station, but we're doing a train station because because we're doing a train station. 
So something I was going to do with this entire thing was outline it in paths, similar to how we've outlined the post sorting facility and a lot of my elementary schools. But I think what I'm actually going to do is outline it in this little alleyway again, just because it's something that vehicles can drive around and they might drive around. There's no guarantee that they will. And obviously it's going to ever so slightly break my rule with regards to these one way roads, but I'm sort of OK with that. It's not the uh, it's not the end of the world. And apparently I can't do the roads right up against this side of the airport, which I guess is fine. We'll go a little bit further out in this side. We'll go 56 meters and we'll do exactly the same down here as well. It also means that this little connection here into the airport is not going to look all weird like. So we'll bring this sort of up and around to here. We'll go an extra 56 meters. These guys should connect together if I've done my math right, which it looks like I absolutely have. So get rid of that extra bit and mind that too much to be completely honest what i might do is just try and get sort of the edges of the runway and we'll do an extra sort of 112 there we'll do an extra sort of 112 there and do something like that so it sort of you know borders the runway a little bit better or like the area that the planes will be coming in we'll do the same thing here for 112 we'll do the same thing oh where did i do it at this end right about in line with that sort of dark gray bit. So we'll do 112 there and do exactly the same thing. And I might do some curves in those corners. I might do some angles. Maybe it would make more sense to just sort of connect these straight across than have that bit there. And I think it does. I think that does look a bit better. So we'll sort of do exactly that just to sort of not have that weird little corner. And then for these guys, I've got no idea, to be completely honest, what the uh, what the angle should look like for these guys. I wasn't really paying attention to the distance there. So this goes in like this. It's 112. We already know that. That's 72. That's fine. So the distance I'm looking for here is 72, which is right about there. So I want to go from that point to right about there. Take out all the extra parts. Does that look OK? I, I don't know. I, I don't know about that, actually. I might <laughs> I might just go back to what we had before. I think it looked a little bit better. And you know, even though we do have that road out there, I do think the path kind of helps to just make it feel a little bit more like a, a very definitive border around the, uh, the outside of the airport itself. So now, I mean, it, technically it could be functional once we give it power, but I do want to try and get these trains in here and figure it out before we do all of that. So... We're going to keep the game paused for the time being. And what I'm going to do is bring this brush down to about 200 and we'll go from here. And I'm just going to see if I can get a nice gradual little slope, something like this. It's going to be a lot of terraforming to make this all sort of look the way I want it to. But I think for the time being, I'm just going to use this as a connection to the region. I know that might seem a little bit silly, but it's just it's for the time being. We will connect this up to the rest of the city at some point, but just for now. I want to see what I can get away with. I also really want it to run right along the backs of these buildings. So we'll turn off our guidelines for now, and we're just going to do something like this. A little bit of an incline on that, uh, that track, but that's probably fine. We can bring this guy sort of straight through here, and we'll start to bring it sort of straight down here. And I wonder, can I get something that's going to be a relatively decent looking curve on this entire thing? Uh, it looks like I absolutely can. So we'll bring you through. We'll connect those together. That looks pretty solid to me. A bit of terrain smoothing and all this will, of course, make it a bit better a little bit later on. Do I want to go for a tunnel or do I want to go up and over this hill? That's the real question. I'm sort of thinking I want to be able to see my trains. So I think what we'll do is turn on the contour lines and oh boy. OK, that might be <laughs> that might be some wishful thinking. Hmm. I don't know about that suddenly. Uh, we might we might just want to do a tunnel. I'm going to be honest. We that's that's quite the um, I mean, it's not that bad. It's not it's not the worst thing in the world, but we uh, we definitely might have a bit of a challenge here. Oh, boy. OK, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Can I get this to sort of line up roughly with the highway? Is that going to be something we can do? We can bring it out. That's that's more or less parallel. It's probably not perfect, but it's it's going to be good enough. And then all I need to do is connect this guy to that guy. I'm probably going to need to buy this map tile out here. So this one and I don't think I'll need that one. So we'll just get the uh, get the one for now. 
And then, yeah, these just need to curve together. That's going to run straight out. I mean, they could, they could arguably, probably connect together if I just bring this sort of all the way out here, get a nice sort of 180 degree snap. And uh, am I going to get the guideline for this guy? I don't think I'm going to. Okay. Well, that's fine. This can go a little bit further in uh, in a straight line for the time being. The incline's not going to be too bad. So 1.2 is, is fair enough. And yeah, I think it's going to have to be a tunnel. I do. I mean, right about here, I think, is where it's going to go into a tunnel. So we'll go a little bit further. We'll go for 2% on an incline right about there. And then, well... I say it needs to be a tunnel. What's that going to be? That's nine. Yeah, definitely going to be a tunnel. And you know what? It's honestly not a bad looking run for a train. It's probably one of the neater tunnels that I've done so far in City Skylines 2. So I'm kind of willing to allow that. It doesn't look all that bad at all. So now what we'll do is very simply come over here. And I realize I am going to need to connect this to all of my existing lines anyway, because that's the only way we're going to get a cargo uh, rail connection here. But we'll run this guy out to wherever that is, Garden Plain, apparently. And then we'll run it back. And that's going to be one of the two potential cargo train lines for the airport. And that's okay. As for everything else, what I'm thinking I want to do is maybe have this leftmost section of track for the passengers go out through this valley. And I... Oh, man. Connecting it out to the region here is going to be a nightmare. But that's kind of what I want to do is get another regional connection for the airport. And then this end is probably going to run out and connect to the cargo tracks, I guess. That's actually probably not a terrible idea. Let's let's go ahead and do that really quickly. We'll just run this guy from about here. We'll go for... I don't really know what kind of distance because we are going to have a lot of space between this and the rest of the airport, which could be used for development of something. I don't really know. I mean, I was going to put a suburb out here, but suddenly... We're going to be dealing with a lot less space thanks to the uh, the train tracks, so not really too sure what way we're going to do this. But for now, we can line it up with the end of that road. So that's 470 meters to about there. And then all I need to do is somehow merge this across in a way that's going to be really satisfying. So bring you out like this, I guess. That's a little sharper of a turn than I was hoping for, but it should be all right. And then I'm wondering... Can I just bring it straight into here and kind of merge it in a way that's not going to look terrible? So what, 208 and 211, does that look okay? Honestly, it's not bad. And again, it does give us that little connection out to the region for this guy. So I'm sort of willing to allow that. Let's go ahead and just connect up the, uh, the regional line here to Garden Plain, which is right about there. And we'll bring it back. And I guess at this point, I can't really put it off any longer. I am going to try and connect out to this valley one way or other. But what I'm going to do is get myself just a little bridge that goes over this highway. So we're going to say right about here is going to be where that bridge can go. We'll go a little further, something like this. I want to get it relatively central because of course I do. Uh, that looks okay by me. It is 10 meters above the road, which is probably fair enough. And then my goal is going to be to somehow get this to uh, slope down really nicely. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do that, but we will figure it out. So give me give me some contour lines and bring this over. So that's not high enough. Give me this contour line. And that's not terrible. I don't remember which contour line it was. Was it this one? It was... That's actually kind of perfect. Okay. So that's sort of what I'm looking for. I think what I'm going to do is basically just do this and we'll get this to sort of use just land as as the not the bridge but you know what I mean as the the basis for the the bridge itself so take this out and somehow I'm gonna bridge across this in a way that's not gonna look terrible uh so basically I want to go from here to there and that's not so bad actually I mean it looks a bit silly but I'm hoping I can do some good things and then my my theory here is that I can slope the terrain from somewhere. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where. I think what we'll do actually is we'll cheat for a second. We'll bring this guy straight out and we'll bring this guy sort of straight over so I can see what point they kind of intersect, which is going to be really, really early on actually, which is a bit worrying. 
but it's not necessarily the end of the world. And if anything, I think that might actually work out really nicely in my favor. So let's just get our guidelines. Let's get a nice little simple curve here. And yeah, I don't, I don't love how, I don't love how sharp, well, not sharp, but I don't love how close this curve is to the station itself, but we'll make it work. So right about there, so right about there. Honestly, it looks fine. And then this bit's going to be changed up because obviously this uh, slope is terrible. So we'll go ahead and just put a bit of a, a node there. Delete you and delete you. And basically I have to slope from, let's say back there the entire way down. So we get something nice and even. So from here, we want to go to there and we are just going to hit this straight across like that. We can hit it with a nice smoothing brush at some point to make it look better. But in theory, if I just run from here to this guy, that looks okay. And then, yeah, this just has to go out, you know, casually into the valley, which is going to be, yeah, that's the, that's the tricky part is getting this guy out into that valley. I'm also wondering what to do with these extra two tracks because only one of them is going to connect over to, well, actually, I know exactly what I'm going to do. One of these guys can have a train that comes in from this part of the region. And then one of them is going to have a train that comes in from, I guess, Emerson Square, Primrose, Victoria Glen. In saying that, can you imagine, you're like, you're getting on a train in here or here. You have to go the entire way out of the city, around the suburbs, and loop around to get to the airport. It's really not that efficient, but it's going to be cool. I'm excited about it. It's big train networks. I never do big train networks in city skylines. So this is this is new and exciting for me. So I've sort of realized that actually getting the tracks out here for this little regional train is going to be a little bit tricky, but what I'd really like to do is try and follow this road. And I don't know that that's going to be a good idea, but I really like the idea of, of just following and kind of hugging this road. I think it'll look good. I do. I, I don't know that I want it to be sort of lower than the road. I don't know if I want to go around and flatten the entire road either because I don't know if I'm going to look at it that much. But I think we're sort of going to give this a shot and we're going to just see what happens with this little idea that I have because it might it might be something interesting. I might be onto something here in terms of this little regional train. I think it's going to look good. It's going to have to cross the water at some point. It's going to have to cross the water probably probably around here, because I want to go sort of straight across and then start following this road. So that's going to be the real challenge, is getting it to cross the water in a way that looks good, and also dealing with all the little bumps and things like that. But I I like this idea a lot, so I'm going to sort of stick with it for now. We'll turn our guidelines off. We'll turn off the grid snapping. And basically, this guy is going to go to... I'm going to say about there. I do think it needs to go up a little bit now, though, because this is where we're going to be starting to approach a bridge. So we'll bring this down a little bit. We'll go to maybe 7.5 meters is, is what we're going to be looking for. That does give us the concrete, which is fair enough. And I'm going to say right about there is where I want this to go. And that looks OK. It's basically going to cut across and sort of follow the curve of the the existing road. The only problem is this this bridge, because what I might have to do here is cross over a highway. In fact, I'm going to have to cross over a highway one way or other. And I don't like the idea of doing that. I also don't like the idea of doing a tunnel because I think it's going to look stupid. So one way or other, I need to get this track to connect on the other side of this uh, of this bridge. You know, embarrassingly, it took me longer than I care to admit to realize that I could just take out the road and turn it into a bridge and that that would probably make a lot more sense. So that's that's what I'm going to do is take out the road and turn it into a bridge because that makes a lot more sense. We'll just sort of flatten out this terrain for now, bring it all down a bit, something like this, and we'll bring ourselves a train line that just goes straight from out there, so right about here, to, uh, honestly, right about there is probably fair enough. We'll go to, uh, actually, we'll go a little bit, a little bit further back, because we are going to get a curve on this thing. Basically, it's going to need to curve from this guy sort of down, so we'll do something like that. We'll get ourselves a bit of a slope terrain tool between the pair, 
And that's actually pretty much the same height. There is a bit of a slope in there, but it's nothing too crazy. Basically, just connect these guys together as, as best we can. It's not perfect, but it does the job. And then I just need to run a road from here to the bridge again, which should be relatively easy. So from here, we want to go straight out. We want this to line up as best we can with the bridge, which is right about there. And there we go. Wasn't that easy? Wasn't that so much simpler? I mean, yes, we lose the big concrete bit leading up to the bridge, but now we have a train that runs under here. And it, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I spent a little bit more time than I care to admit trying to figure out how I was going to make this work. And it was just that easy. That's all I had to do. That's really embarrassing. It's, <laughs> it's really kind of embarrassing. Anyway, let's do the um, let's do the train out here. I was really hoping to I want to keep as much of this tree line as I can, but uh, I don't know how I'm necessarily going to do that. We are going to be getting rid of some of them. I guess I could put the train right along the road and keep the tree line between the road and the river. But then where's the train going to go? I guess it can go into a tunnel like here and somehow go out to the region. So yeah, it can stay on the left side of the road from this perspective, that's fine. I just need to figure out exactly where, I guess. I guess we'll just sort of freeform this thing as best we can. And there we go. We have ourselves a train track that runs the entire length of this road. It goes into a tunnel right about here and it's honestly not so bad. If we have a little look at the underground view, it's a little bit steep, but I didn't have to spiderweb the entire thing up the mountain this time around, which was nice. So that actually gives us a passenger connection out there. But also because I built this little part here, we now have both of the cargo platforms for the airport connected to the region, which I think is kind of exciting. I also made this change because I realized that really the best place to run a an extra bit of track for the rest of my city was going to be in here. So we're going to try and create some kind of little intersection thing for the trains, run it behind the elementary school, sort of along the mountain and connect it over this way. And so that means I'm going to have to grab these tiles, which is going to be 568,000. That's fine. We've almost got $300 million. And then in the simplest sense, I'm just going to try and create something that's going to look decent, I guess, is, is what we're going to be going for. So let's figure out what exactly that's going to be. Now this... I mean, the land is pretty low around the water here. It's a bit higher on this side, though. So I think what we'll do is grab the terrain from here and push this right up to the water's edge. And we're going to do something similar to what we've done before, just using this as sort of our, our way to get out there. So we'll flatten this out all nice like this. We'll do exactly the same thing on this side, which is going to be a bit weird because the uh, it's, it's a fair bit higher on this side, but that's okay. We can make this all work kind of nicely in uh, in a moment with a couple of uh, little slopes around here. And I think what I'm going to do, what I'd like to do almost is get it to be parallel to the back of the elementary school. So if anything, that's kind of going to mean either I build it, well, I could build it up here and have it nice and parallel. I think that's actually what I'm going to do. So we'll bring this out to here, which should be totally fine. I'm going to get myself a section of train track, bring it up to surface level there. And it is essentially going to be doing this, I guess, if I can get it to uh, to work nicely, which I absolutely can. So that's nice and parallel right there, which is exactly what I want. So we'll do this. We'll get a nice straight section track there. And then on this side of things, we'll just flatten this out a little bit further, just like that. And that should mean that I can run a track from here the entire way across that body of water. It's nice and level. And... I, I want to say I can make that work. I want to say that'll be fine. I guess the real question is, can I bring this over and then just sort of curve it around? Is that a bit too sharp? It does look a little bit too sharp, doesn't it? It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily look all that great, but I think, I think I'm going to allow it. And then over here, pretty much similar story. We'll do something like, uh, something like this. And that's basically how we're going to get over that way. And honestly, I'm okay with it. I'm probably not going to look out here all that often. So it's not the end of the world if this is a little bit rough looking. Plus, we can put some trees around this, which is absolutely the plan. So at some point, rather, we're going to be hiding some crimes out here, which sounds that sounds a lot worse. That sounds a lot worse than than I wanted. It. By that, I mean, I'm hiding the imperfections, not that I'm coming out to the forest to hide. Anyway, uh, the point being, 
it'll look fine eventually. I will say, I'm very tempted to swap this out. Can I can I get something that looks like a fancy a fancy train bridge? I don't think there is. I don't I don't know that I love how this looks. I don't I don't know that I like that. I might have to try and swap it out for something else. Doing this might break everything, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And we're gonna see if we can't maybe. I don't know, does that look better? Is that in line? It's kind of hard to tell. I need that to be 180 degrees on the uh, the right side though. So if I do if I do this, wait, no, that was not right at all. Uh, give me the straight section track. Go from here to about there. Does that look better? That looks so much better. Oh, that looks so much better. <laughs> That's absolutely what we're doing. And that gives us our connection, which means I can now go ahead and set up a passenger line that runs from, I guess, here all the way out to the region on this side of things. So Morton Hampstead is where this guy's going to be going. So right to about there. But more importantly, what I can do is run a line from here that's basically going to go the entire way around everything to Emerson Square, which uh, I'm very excited about. I'm absolutely, I'm yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I might actually go so far as bringing it into here as well because we don't actually have one there. So I think that's what we're going to do. We'll bring it into the central train station, whatever I called that one. Uh, bring it. Oh, do I want it to? You know what? No, we're just going to go to Emerson and we're just going to go to the airport is what we're going to do. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of trains, but I'm actually really excited about it. That also gives us a connection, meaning that trains can get out here. So let's take a look at what we're doing. So train line number 10 is Emerson slash airport. And there we go. We have all of our train lines. Now, what I've decided to do is swap these around a little bit so that any of the lines that go out of the region are now red. Any that stay within the region are blue, of which there are apparently two of them, which I don't. I, I thought there were more than that. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I really uh, kind of thought there were more than that, but apparently not, which is fair enough. That's it's it just is what it is, I suppose. I'm not really super worried about it. It'll do the job. Either way, that does now mean that people can get out here, which is very exciting. I'm kind of kind of keen to see how this works out. But I also want to get some buses in here before we get too much uh, too much more carried away. So what I'm going to do is a bus stop right about here and a bus stop right about here. I'm going to do a taxi shelter sort of in the middle and I think I'm just going to do taxi shelters sort of the entire way across there. I can't do them on that side, unfortunately, but that's OK. And I might do them down here as well. I think I, I think I am just going to do a whole bunch of taxi shelters sort of the entire way around here. That's something with airports that I've noticed is they're usually covered in taxi stands. So that's absolutely what we're going to do. And then in terms of buses, I think what we'll say is we'll have one that goes from the airport to this sort of central hospital station, which seems fair enough. So that's going to sort of loop around a bit like this. And then this one is going to go from here to it, it is. Well, could it go to Emerson? I did see some comments that talked about the fact that I did both a bus line and a train line from Emerson to the village in the last episode. So I don't know if it makes too much sense, but I might do it anyway. I might do it in a roundabout way, though. So it goes from the airport to maybe sort of up here first or maybe it goes all the way down the highway and it sort of loops around kind of the entire city almost not the entire city but it goes from the airport to like here sort of following that main road towards Emerson then back to the airport that might not be a terrible idea but I'm going to need more bus stops before I can do that so we'll do an EU bus shelter on well I can't do one on that side of the road because there's a tram stop that's fair enough uh, ooh, a bus stop on any of those roads is going to be a bit of a nightmare, though. I don't know how I feel about that because it is it's not going to cut away at the sidewalk, which is a bit of a problem. I don't. Hmm. OK, maybe we don't quite do all that. Maybe what we do instead is we go from the airport here and instead of going all the way out there, we sort of come back into the city and we go this way. So we can go ahead and stop in here by Laurel Grove. We'll stop up here, which is relatively close to the island, and that's okay. 
we can then bring it over to the what, what's the name of that street again it's applegate so applegate station is what we've been calling that we can then bring it down and into thornton street which seems fair enough and then we'll bring it up to emerson we'll stop right in front of the station do i want to bring it this seems like this is a huge line this this is this is maybe a bit much i think i think that's maybe what we'll do maybe we'll bring it sort of i don't want to bring it down here because that gets rid of the need for that other line i think we just bring it back I don't think this is going to be the most efficient bus line, but I just want both of these to be functional. So that's kind of why I'm doing it. And then in terms of public transport, we'll just go in here. We'll get those two bus lines. So have I only got, have I missed, I've numbered these. Yeah, this one's supposed to be, oh God, I've got to renumber these. This one's 13. This one's supposed to be 14. This one's supposed to be 15. This one's supposed to be 16. And then that gives us 17. Oh boy. 17 and 18 is what they're supposed to be. <laughs> also, interestingly, I've done the complete opposite with my buses. Anything that stays in the city is red. Anything that goes out is is blue. That's going to be really confusing, actually, but that's that's fine. <laughs> that's totally OK. Uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of decoration. In some of these rows we will get some grass in here just to uh, change things up a little bit. So we'll do some grass around there. Basically, I don't want anyone parking on any of these roads whatsoever. So we'll line sort of this inner space with grass. We'll do sort of the wider sidewalk there and we'll do the wider sidewalks here as well. This is all going to have the nice wide sidewalks as well, since that's technically just for more sort of industrial traffic. I don't think I can do grass down here. These guys are absolutely going to have grass and I think I will line them with trees. And then down here is old highway anyway, so that's totally fine. Let's get our trees in here. So this looks all nice and fancy when they eventually grow. We'll do exactly the same sort of around all of this so that it's going to look all fancy once the trees grow in as well. And I've apparently got trees on parts of the, the road that I don't want them on. I don't want them out there. I just want them on the inside. And at this end of things, we are looking pretty solid. OK, so that's going to be the trees for the inside of this. I was going to try and build a suburb today, but I think what I'm going to do instead is just completely cover this entire area in uh, some trees and get the forests back in here. We'll get a power connection to this guy. We'll get a sewage and water connection to this guy. And we're going to see what it looks like when it gets up and running. Oh, and wouldn't you know, we don't have enough vehicles for any of this. That's going to be a problem, actually. I mean, the buses will be easy. We can just build another bus depot. In fact, we could arguably build a bus depot right out here. And that's probably actually what I'm going to do because this is a really good place for it. The issue is the trains getting more trains is going to be tricky because we need to build another rail yard and i don't really know where i'm going to do that i guess it could be in here we could extend the airport to give it a rail yard if i really wanted to i mean we've got some interesting looking bits of track we have some we could have some fun with it but we're not going to be doing that today we're probably just going to go around and reduce the number of trains and all of my other lines just so I can get this functional. In terms of a bus depot, though, I mean, it's not a huge building and arguably it would look OK in this little space here. So I think that's probably what we're going to do with it. So we'll go in. We're just going to take out some sections of this path. And then the bus depot is going to live pretty much right there. And I'm sort of OK with that. I might shuffle it along a little bit. Uh, so that I can get this guy on the right side of it. I think that would be a bit better. This is how many units? It is six in terms of its depth. So this guy would need to go to somewhere a little bit further along, basically. So what I can do is get myself this little one-way road right about here. We'll bring it across just like so. We will shuffle you a little bit further to there. And then we'll build, ooh, this needs to go even further, actually. So we'll put you right about there. Then this guy can go in that corner, which I think looks okay. I don't, I don't love it, but it does give us sort of a, a building here. It gives us a fence and all that good stuff, so it's fine. And then I might be so tempted as to put another one at the back just to give us a bit of asymmetry on that thing. I might even go so far as to just put a bunch of these onto the, uh, under the depot here i mean it's a weird looking building now it is definitely that but at the very least 
it's going to give us a lot of buses and that's kind of what I'm looking for. It's also having sewage problems. We don't seem to be having that anywhere else. Why are you having sewage problems? Oh, you're not anymore. There we go. All right. So all I need to do, I guess, at this stage is get the roads in here properly. So what we'll do is have the road sort of come across like this. Have you come down to there and we'll swap this guy out for this, which looks a bit better. I would almost be tempted to... I would almost be tempted to swap this out to have two lanes, but I, I think we're okay with it as it is. So let's just get our nice chunky sidewalks on this guy so that everything lines up nicely, which is now perfect. And then all I need to do is get my uh, get my paths back in here. And there we go. We have ourselves a new bus depot. It's got some paths around it to sort of nicely border it. It looks okay. It's an obvious sort of addition to the whole thing. I don't love how it's turned out, but it does the job. And... Excitingly, it means that the last thing I need to do now is go into here, get myself a passenger airplane, what is it, passenger airplane line tool, and I have some uh, some choices. We've got one, two, three, four, five different stands, so we're going to start here, and we are going to go out to wherever this goes, Snyderville, and we're going to come back just like so. We're going to have this one go all the way out to whom? Oh boy, with my accent, that's not great. Uh, and we'll bring it back. This one is going to go out to Pendle and come back. And do we have another one? Do we have another connection? We don't. We only have the three, which is totally fine by me. What I am going to do, though, is just move this one around the corner because it's a bit more interesting. We'll sort of space them out a little bit. And then what we can do is I'm, I'm not going to name these right now. Well, I should name them right now. I'm not going to. We're going to make this guy red, I guess. What airline is is Delta? Does Delta use red, uh, red livery? You know, British Airways uses like blue and red on the tail. So we'll do red. We'll do sort of a blue, something a bit like that. We'll do green and that'll be our Aer Lingus or something like that. Uh, so there we go. That'll be, you know, well, actually, let me, let me redo these ever so slightly. Just simply because if I do it in this order, we get a nice little, nice little RGB layout right there and that seems perfectly fine the other thing that i want to do is get some cargo planes to go from here out to about there and we'll bring it back we'll go from here out to there and bring it back and uh we only we're gonna have to share a uh one of the terminals this time around but we'll go and do exactly that now, in terms of the cargo planes, we have, that's, uh, that's, that's what I'm looking for there. Cargo air routes. Let's do, what is it? What's the orange one? Is the orange one like TNT or something like that? I know like UPS is kind of a brown. So we'll do like a, we'll do like an orange one. I don't know what other companies we will do like a, I don't know, like a blue, a very, very strong blue. I don't know what that's necessarily going to be, but Apparently it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a very strong blue is, uh, is what it's going to be. And then I don't know for this one, I don't know what other, other colors to go for. Let's just do white or like a, a let's just do a white one and that'll be fine. So now we just have to wait and we should have some planes coming in here. And there we go. We have a plane coming in from Snyderville. There are two people on board right now, which is probably the pilot and the co-pilot. I am noticing some trends, some 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 similarities between City Skylines 1 and 2 with regards to the planes. They come in at a real, oh my god, there's so many planes. That's, that's dangerous. <laughs> Good lord. All right, well, that's kind of cool, actually. We got some cargo planes up ahead as well. It does look good. It does. It's This is actually really exciting. This is my first time playing around with the airports in City Skylines 2, and I've got to say... <laughs> That's really cool looking. Oh, there's different. I forgot there's different plane models as well. Oh, man. That's so good. That is so good. And so even though it's not technically an international airport, we're going to be calling this Linden International Airports because I'm probably not going to build the actual international airport on this map. I don't think we're going to have the space to do it unless we tear this one apart someday, which I might do. I'm not against doing that. It's something I'm trying to do with City Skylines too, is, is get into the habit of 
occasionally tearing things apart when they kind of need it, which is why I wanted to come in and tear out that intersection once upon a time. The only issue is that uh, as Linden continues to grow and develop, the simulation is slowing down more and more and more, which is a common complaint about City Skylines 2. The simulation just gets slower and slower, and eventually people are reporting that it does sort of grind to a halt. And I'm a little worried about that because the simulation, it right now it's on three times normal speed. This is three times, this is one. There is a bit of a difference, but every now and then the game will just hitch. And there's parts of the simulation, like you can see it's slowing down there, even though it's still on three times speed. Parts of the simulation seem to just occasionally fall apart. Buses at times were just sitting at this intersection for seemingly little reason. Uh, it's like right now it's frozen and is slowing down despite the fact that I didn't pause it or anything like that. Basically, it's it's struggling. Uh, I've done some checks. It's not my CPU. My you know we're not throttling and maxing out my CPU. I think it is partly the game, or mostly the the game. I do have some plans to upgrade my PC, and I do think that'll probably help us a little bit. But it's probably not going to help that much, to be completely honest. So. We'll see what happens. Either way, we have an international airport now. We've just passed $300 million, and we're actually making a little bit of money right now as well, which is lovely. I'm quite pleased about this, to be completely honest. I, I absolutely am. We've got cargo planes coming and going all the time. We've got passengers coming and going all the time. We have no one on any of the buses right now, and we don't have enough trains, but we'll figure it out Is is what we'll do. I... I'm actually really, really pleased about this. I think it looks so cool. I really do. I'm really, really pleased with uh, with how this has turned out. And I'm also sort of excited. Oh, yeah, we do have people waiting here for buses. Uh, I'm also sort of excited. Oh, wow, we actually filled that bus. I'm excited to see the taxis come in, and maybe we should build a little taxi depot, but I think my priority, not today. I might do it between episodes. It might be a part of the next episode. I don't know yet, but we're definitely going to need another rail yard so that we can get plenty of trains coming and going here. Because I do want to see, I want to see so many trains going in and out of this, uh, in and out of this station. And right now, three of the four lines don't have any. And over this way, we don't have any. And that's, I mean, you have to keep in mind, I've gone into my trains here. And I've set it so that every, wait a minute, that one has three trains. Interesting. Emerson Airport should not have three trains. Let's bring that down to two, annoyingly. That'll free up one train at the very least. And then for cargo, I mean, if we look at trains, we have a couple with two as well. I might actually be able to pull. Oh, wait, no. Oh, we might. We might have hit the uh, the minimum on those cargo lines. Can I bring you down? Yeah. So we freed up one other train, which is something at the very least. Uh, what are you doing? Where are you from? This is interesting. Emerson to airports. That, I think, is probably going to be airport to garden plane. Yeah. Okay, so we do, we do have some stuff going on. If anything, we might just not need the regional lines at this point. Same with this one, airport to Galesburg. We might not really be needing all of these regional lines at the moment, at the, uh, the moment. but we'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. We'll see if they maybe fill up out there in the region and come back. I've got no idea. Wait, where are you both going? So you're going airport Garden Plain. You're going airport Galesburg. So are you going to go out and turn? Is that what's going on with this guy? Where do you where do you connect to? Because you both go out that I've honestly got no. Oh, you're going in there. You're going to pull in and then you're going to flip around and head back. OK, well, that makes sense. A bit weird, but it makes sense. Anyway, I think with all of that done, we can go ahead and leave it there for today. This was a nice little project to put together. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I hope you are as well. Like I said, there are some things we're going to have to work on in the next episode. We need to get another rail yard, and I do want to put some suburbs out here. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but I do think putting some houses sort of close to the airport is... It's not going to be pleasant for the people there, but it's something that's really common, again, with the airports that I talked about at the start of the video, Belfast International and Belfast City. There are people living really close to them. Heathrow in the UK is a really controversial example of an airport with houses really close by because every time they try to expand it the people are like no Gatwick airport's exactly the same basically I think houses near this thing would be kind of cool maybe maybe out here 
maybe down here. I don't really know how we're gonna do it, but we'll figure it out. Whatever we decide to do, that's gonna be for future me to deal with. So thank you very much for watching everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.